Hello, it's Jim from Great White Con here with our daily Arctic disinformation debunking for May 17th, 2024. Chris Martz, the new kid on the climate scepticism block, has turned his eagle eye on the Arctic again. Chris asserts on his ex, formerly Twitter, feed that sea ice extent is currently the highest it has been for the date in 11 years and is higher than it was at this time in 1989, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2010 and 2011. Which may be true for the National Snow and Ice Data Center's sea ice index metric that Chris proudly displays on X. My response is, so what? For an in-depth explanation of my shrugging shoulders, see the Great White Con article entitled Reuters Fact Checks Daily Septic Arctic Sea Ice Nonsense, which I link to in the video description below. In brief, according to Professor Julian Struver from University College London, there is no correlation between the winter sea ice extent and how much will melt out in the summer. And we have seen this time and time again. And here at the Great White Con, we have seen posts like Chris's time and time again, Julianne. Including from one of the geriatrics on the climate scepticism block, Tony Heller. Sadly, Tony took exception to a recent history lesson of mine, so I can't see his incessant stream of Arctic themed cherry picks anymore. Next on today's Arctic misinformation menu, we have another newish, albeit middle-aged, kid on the climate scepticism block. John Robson allegedly holds a PhD in American history, so perhaps he could try giving Tony Heller lessons on the birth of the United States of America without getting blocked. Um, I digress. Uh, John recently produced a Arctic-themed YouTube video under the Climate Discussion Nexus umbrella. This was um, thoroughly debunked by Potholer, who you may be familiar with. Um, see the link in the video description below if you want to have your funny bone tickled. Since then, John has hidden his original video and replaced it with this one. And I'm also here with some startling news from the doomed Franklin expedition that it's cold in winter in the Arctic. No, wait, sorry, apparently it's hot. An excited Canadian press story about the recovery of artifacts from the shipwrecked Erebus and Terror slipped in the claim that, quote, climate change, however, is shifting the terms of the work. Less sea ice means the wrecks are more vulnerable to waves and currents generated by winter storms, end quote. Which is one more example of the way in which the climate cult can't be bothered to check mere facts anymore, since Arctic ice has actually been rebounding lately and is higher than it's been at this time of year for any point in the last 20 years. Eagle-eared listeners may have already spotted that evidently the climate sceptic cult can't be bothered to check mere facts anymore, since Chris and John disagree about the current position of Arctic sea ice extent in the historical record. Is it the highest for the date in 11 years, or 20 years, or some other number? John confidently asserts that Arctic ice has been rebounding lately. Um, we'll get back to that in due course, but um, perhaps John is a bit confused because the NSIDC extent graph he displays is dated January the 6th rather than mid-May. All of which makes... Um, my very good friend Snow White and I wonder why neither Chris nor John showed their flock of faithful followers a graph of NSIDC Arctic sea ice extent dated by way of arbitrary example December the 6th 2023. Or why neither of them chose to point out that NSIDC extent is currently still well below where it was on the same day of the year in 2012 the year which went on to produce the lowest summer Arctic sea ice extent in the satellite era. Be that as it may, John continues. 
Meanwhile, since those ships were lost in 1848 off King William Island and Nunavut, the Arctic has been navigable on at least two occasions, once in the very early 20th century and once in the mid 20th century. So, are the waves and currents worse today because they're climatey than the ones were in the 1940s or 1900s that were just weather? Of course they were. Everybody knows that. Even though, if you actually look at a map, and even journalists can in theory do a bit of background research, the area in question is among the most ice locked in the entire Arctic. Now in theory, even climate skeptics can do a bit of background research and actually look at a map, but by and large, evidently they can't be bothered. For John's information, here's the Canadian Ice Service's official chart of sea ice in the vicinity of King William Island in September 23. In the days of Amundsen and Larsen, that area may well have been amongst the most ice locked in the entire Arctic, but it certainly isn't any more. Last summer, for example, a six-year-old successfully captained his modest pleasure craft through the fabled Northwest Passage. Here's the evidence. Now, getting back to the alleged Arctic sea ice rebound, way back in the mists of time before he blocked me, Tony Heller was fond of tweeting images of the Danish Meteorological Institute's map of Arctic sea ice thickness and their accompanying graph of Arctic sea ice volume. Um, see the link to an in-depth discussion of, about those metrics in the video description below. But um, in brief, here's the latest edition of the DMI's Arctic sea ice volume graph. Does that look like any sort of rebound to you? Ah, well, that's enough nonsense for one day, but no doubt there'll be plenty more disinformation to debunk in the not-too-distant future. So until then, it's goodbye from Snow, and it's goodbye from me.